How's it going everyone? As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne and this is Deck Ready, my channel all about the Steam Deck and sometimes other gaming handhelds, but not really that often lately. In today's video, I've got two great topics for you and one of them actually is about another gaming handheld. The first topic though is that there's a huge update to Steam that'll let you share your games with pretty much as many people as you want, which sounds awesome. And then the second news story is that despite its best efforts, one of the Steam Deck's biggest competitors seems to have fallen in front of the force that is Steam Deck and Steam OS. Anyway, let's get into the news here. The first news story I have to talk about is that Valve has finally overhauled the Steam family sharing system that they had before. I personally have never taken advantage of this feature, but a bunch of my friends have, where basically if you have a game in your Steam library, when you're not logged in, they're able to play those games if you're family sharing with them. And this overhaul kind of tweaks things a little bit, but also adds in a lot more requested features. So the first thing this does is get rid of that limit that they had in place before before that would stop you from playing games at the same time as other people. So if you have a library of a bunch of games and you have kids, you've got roommates, you've got people in your house who either have Steam Decks or gaming PCs, and you're all sharing one library, uh, you can all play pretty much at the same time, which is really cool. Like that's honestly pretty generous. There are some caveats there that I'll talk about in a second, but on the surface even, I think that's a pretty cool update for Valve to do because if you all pull your money together to buy the new game like Dragon's Dogma or Helldivers or Final Fantasy VII Rebirth when that comes out, as long as you're all playing different games at the same time, you can be logged in technically to the same Steam family all at the same time, which is sweet. The biggest limitation here, of course, is the fact that you can't play the same game at the same time. So it's not like you could buy one copy of Helldivers 2, share it with someone in your house who also has a PC or a Steam Deck and both play at the same time. Both of those people would still need their own copy of Helldivers 2. But if someone wanted to play Dragon's Dogma 2 while you were playing Helldivers 2, then you're all good. They can just log into their family enabled account and then play Dragon's Dogma 2 while you're playing uh, Helldivers 2. What I'm really curious about is if this update goes far enough for someone who has two devices with the same Steam account logged in. So say I'm on my gaming PC and I'm playing Helldivers 2, there's a lot of downtime between matches where people are spending their medals on war bonds or they're upgrading their ship or they're looking at their stratagems, they're changing out their weapons. Sometimes it can be like up to five or 10 minutes, which is basically the amount of time it takes to complete a mission or two in Expeditions Mudrunner. So between matches, because I'm already all set up in Helldivers, I play enough of that game, I've got enough groups of people where I'm just ready to go at all times. I just boot up uh, Expeditions on my Steam Deck, but the annoying thing is I have to make sure it's in offline mode because if I'm online, even though the game's not really online, it'll say, hey, you're logged in on your Steam Deck, you're logged in on your PC, you have to quit one of the games that you're playing right now to be able to continue playing either of them. Obviously I can just put my Steam Deck in offline mode, but that's an extra step that I would like to not have to do. So if this feature allowed you to actually be logged in on two devices at the same time in the same household at the very least, I think that'd be pretty cool. I have to do a little bit of testing, but if anyone knows, please let me know down in the comments below. Anyway, continuing on with this new family update, you're going to need to have Steam beta enabled, which is super easy to do. I'll walk you through the steps right now. All you have to do is go to settings, interface, client beta participation, and then select Steam family beta. Then to create a family, go to the store page, click your account, then click click details, family management, and create a family. So the catch there is that you can have five people within a family, which I think is more than enough unless you have like 15 kids or something like that and they all have Steam Decks. I don't think this will be a problem for most people. There is no mention though on how many actual devices you can add to a family. They say in the Verge article I read that the limit before was 10, but it, with the Steam Deck out there and with so many people having PCs now, but I don't really think it's that big of a deal if it is still the 10 person limit because if you had five people who all had a gaming PC and a Steam Deck, that's 10 devices. So you hit the limit, but everyone would be able to play on both of their devices. I don't know if there's that many people out there who have multiple gaming PCs and a Steam Deck and an ROG Ally and a Legion Go or something like that. So even if it is still the 10 person limit, I don't really think that's that big of a hindrance or limitation. I, I mean, I could be wrong. Obviously there are of course millions of examples people could come up with theoretically to probably counter that. But like for the average person who's going to take advantage of this family sharing feature, I feel like if there is still a 10 person limit, it's not that big of a deal. The one big bummer about this update though is that it's region lock. So my friend Lockmort, who I play with, who lives in Belgium all the time, he's like one of my best friends. I talk to him every night. If I was sharing my library with him before in my Steam family, uh, now it won't work. And then the weirder thing is if you leave a family, you can't join a new one or start your own family for an entire year. I don't really know what they're trying to prevent there. Like maybe it would just overload their servers if people were saying, oh, my one friend owns Dragon's Dogma 2. 
I'll jump in and play that there. My other friend owns like, I don't know, Final Fantasy VII Remake. I wanted to play through that. I'll jump into their family. Like that's a limitation I kind of understand because, you know, you could just like infinitely play free games if you were big enough of a mooch to all of your friends being like, hey man, can I get a hit of that game that you have that my other friend doesn't? They're basically protecting your friendships with that limitation, I guess, right? No one likes that person who's just like immune to spending money, right? Like if you were this person who never bought any games on Steam and then just bounced your Steam library around to like add on to other people's libraries and play their games, you'd kind of become the asshole of your friend group pretty damn quick. So I guess this limitation is there to protect people from just playing infinite free games and then also to protect your friendships with the one guy who's unemployed, who plays every game all the time, wanders the France countryside like Daryl Dixon and, uh, you know, doesn't really do anything except fight zombies and walkers and, you know, save a kid or I, I don't know. This, this analogy is going way too far. Adding credence to what I was just talking about earlier, which is playing multiple games on the same Steam account on two different devices at the same time, you can now have family sharing work in offline mode. So if you have family sharing enabled and you're the, you know, kid, in the scenario or roommate, you if you have the game downloaded under family sharing that you want to play, if you're in offline mode, that game will work. I think it's really cool that there is a robust offline mode for Steam. Obviously, they were kind of like railroaded into having one by making the Steam Deck itself because it's a portable console. You want to play it outside of your house. They need to have a way to play these games offline. I'm pretty sure there's a limit on how long you can play those games uh, until you have to log in again. But as far as I know, it's very generous. So I think it's pretty much as good as it can be. Regardless, if this feature doesn't work where you can play the same account with two different games at the same time, uh, it's good to know that people who are in your family have offline access because, you know, if you're a kid and your parent is the one buying all the games, they don't have to deal with the headache anymore of giving you their credit card and like making it a one-time use thing or buying Steam gift cards if they don't want to put their credit card in your account. Now you can just buy the game, give your kid access to your family account, and then they can take the game on the go. It's pretty much as good as it needs to be. And, you know, in most cases, is as good as it can be. Steam says developers need to authorize their games for this to work, but before the vast, vast majority of games on Steam were already enabled to use family sharing. So like, I don't think that's gonna be that big of a roadblock. And as we all know, the PC community is not the most understanding community in the world. So if there is a big game that comes out like Dragon's Dogma 2, which comes out very soon at the time I'm recording this video, there will be an uproar almost immediately. So I think this will work work itself out sooner rather than later if it does become a problem. I like this update. I think it's cool. It is relevant to Steam Deck users because it kind of helps Steam Deck users in a lot of ways. The Steam Deck is kind of the entry level point to PC gaming. So I could see it being popular with kids or younger people, or even, you know, your roommate who wants to get into PC gaming, but only wants to spend a few hundred dollars to do so. Giving people access to games gets more people playing games. And as I've been talking about on PS Ready a lot lately, there's a huge problem right now where Gen Z and I guess Gen Alpha, they are only playing what are called black hole games, stuff like Destiny 2, Warzone, Apex Legends, Fortnite, you know, these games that you can download for free and then you got to dump in a bunch of money to keep up with expansions, microtransactions, and battle passes. They just don't have the desire, the want, the need to play these story-based single player open world third person action games. They don't have the need to play awesome first person shooters like Doom Eternal that have stories. They don't want to spend 70 bucks to get a game game that's going to end. They want a game that they can use as a social space with their friends online because iPad kids have dominated the world and the art of going outside and imagining things or taking your dog on a walk is just completely lost to younger generations. So giving them the ability to kind of take advantage of the older person's library who is into those games, it hopefully will breed discovery of these games that aren't being played right now. Because I don't know if you saw the news, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is not selling well at all. And it really comes down to the fact that every Everyone who's a potential new audience is kind of sucked into these black hole games and everyone who's the target audience, which is people in my age range, 28 to 35, they're buying these games less and less and less as time goes on. So there needs to be something that happens. But in the meantime, I like opportunities like this that give, you know, younger generations an option at least to be curious and maybe try some of these games out and fall in love with them like we did back in the day. Anyway, that brings us to the second news story of today's video, which is that the Steam Deck has knocked out its biggest 
biggest competitor, the ROG Ally. So right now you can actually buy two different versions of the ROG Ally. There's the Z1 Extreme version, which I would argue is the only one that's worth buying. But right now the Z1 regular edition of the ROG Ally is at a price that honestly makes it pretty compelling. And a lot of places like Best Buy or Amazon, you can pick it up right now for $399, which puts it in range with a lot of the cheapest Steam decks. But you know, the reason that's happening is because this thing has been having problems with sales since it came out. If you go to any Best Buy right now and go to the ROG Ally section, the amount of open box Best Buy stickers you will see is absolutely insane. I think the reason for that is people who want to get into PC gaming kind of bought into the hype of the ROG Ally. They said, hey, PC gaming is a Windows based thing. Traditionally, I want to learn Windows. I'm buying the ROG Ally so I can play games on Xbox Game Pass. I can play games on Battle.net. I don't have to worry about anti-cheat software ruining online gaming like it does with certain live service games on the Steam Deck. And at the very least, I can play Fortnite. That logic makes a lot of sense to me. But then they get this thing. They realize that Windows is definitely not meant to be shoved down onto a tiny little screen. It makes it really hard to operate. All the updates are kind of hard to access. And even the stuff like RSync isn't really as well laid out as what you'd get on the Steam Deck. And Windows itself is not controller operatable. They do things like make the joystick, the right side one, actually be a mouse on the ROG Ally. And then you can click with the bumper. It's really an inelegant solution compared to how organized and well laid out everything is on the Steam Deck. So you can kind of see why that would be a little bit of a tough pill to swallow for people, especially considering the high price tag MSRP wise of the ROG Ally with the Z1 Extreme. And you know, the ROG Ally Z1 edition, I think was five or 600 bucks when it came out. So that thing wasn't that cheap either. I don't want to dump on the ROG Ally because out of all the competitors to the Steam Deck I've used, that's the only one that I actually used for a pretty significant amount of time. When Diablo 4 came out, I was still in my clouded mindset that every game needed to run at 60 FPS and you could run Diablo on Steam Deck at 60 FPS, but you had to use the lowest settings. On the ROG Ally, you could get a pretty reliable 60 if you dropped it to 720p, used upscaling and ran it at medium settings. So I kind of defaulted to that. I'm not exactly excited to see the prices falling though, because I like the handheld PC ecosystem and the more options there are out there, the more people are going to feel compelled to get into it. But I think there needs to be some advancements on the Windows side of things that give it some sort of handheld overhaul. There are rumors that Xbox is working on their own handheld. It's not clear if it's going to run the Xbox OS or be a PC based handheld. It, it could be cool. It could not be. Right now, I think the Steam Deck is as good as it needs to be. And it really just shows that Valve finally achieved their goal with Steam OS, right? Like they wanted that OS to be a competitor to Windows because Windows is kind of strong arming the industry and becoming this bloated mess that deteriorated the way PC games ran. It really just got in the way all the time, especially when they invented games for Windows Live back in the day, which thankfully they eventually got rid of. But yeah, with the ROG Ally, the one big true competitor to the Steam Deck kind of falling to its knees in front of it, I think now is really the time where Valve needs to get their shit together and release SteamOS 3 for PC. But regardless, it is a little bit of a sad day for the ROG Ally seeing it discounted this low. If you've been curious about getting into the Windows handheld ecosystem, I don't think you could do much better than $399 for one of these. Like if you've got the money to spare, I think it might be worth picking one up, especially knowing at Best Buy you can return it within 30 days. So there's really no risk, at least in trying it, seeing if you like it. If you do, keep it. If you don't, return it. You know what I'm saying? That about covers it for this Steam Deck update. Make sure you let me know what you think down in the comments below. Remember to subscribe and set your notifications to all if you haven't already. As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and shape on.